Hello Gemini, March 2023. And it's weird how it's really quiet until I switch the camera on and then all of a sudden all these seagulls and birds just come out. So you may hear seagulls and birds, who knows? Okay, Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Cross watches, <coughs> love life, destiny. We're gonna be asking the questions of March. The first question, Gemini, is what energy are we bringing in? I'm gonna take a couple of cards that just tell you what energy you're bringing in from February, from 2022, from just around and about. So if this was, you know, a plane, this is your kind of luggage that you're checking into March. Doesn't mean you'll be checking out of March with it, okay? In fact, you probably won't because you're a Gemini, you're mutable, things move along with Geminis really nicely usually. So, got through, <laughs> got three, okay, interesting. Haven't yet started speaking like Yoda, but I can feel it's coming. Okay, let's have a looky see at these cards for you. So you've got three cards that tell us the energy that's coming in from before into March. Bye. <laughs> Here we go. Look at these bad boys. Okay, Lightseer's Tarot. Love this deck. So, Seven of Cups. Hmm. Seven of Cups could mean that you're dealing with water signs, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, or water sign issues, which are emotional things. The way you feel about things, the way you feel about people. Um, Seven of Cups, as you can see with this guy here, he kind of... He doesn't know what's underneath all these cups. It's like that game, you know, the game that you sometimes see where there's three cups and someone's switching them around. And you sort of, I don't know, you always know, it's a bit like a fruit machine, isn't it? A slot machine. You never seem to win at that game very much um, because you don't have the information. You're not like genuinely making a choice. You're sort of stumbling about making a hunch, aren't you, at best. This is the energy I think that you've been working with in uh could be a certain situation we'll have a look at your love life and stuff like that it could be just in general in your life in your love life in your career in where you're placed at the moment you know very often as we move from one year into another we do a little bit of a highlight reel or a low light reel depending on the year that we've had and 2022 i'm not sure it's scored that highly for a lot of people um and we tend to kind of measure up and think, well, where am I at and where do I want to be? You know, those sorts of feelings. And I feel like you don't really know the answer to where you're at because I don't think you particularly have the information that you need yet. And this could be because it's being withheld. It could be because it hasn't, it's like fruit on a tree and the information hasn't ripened up yet to drop, if you think of it. If information was an apple, um, it would, you know, it has its point of seed, doesn't it? And then you kind of let it grow and then it drops. Um, it can also be with the Seven of Cups, and we'll look at this in Love Life as well, that there may have been some kind of, you know, just wafting around something. You know when you want a straight answer out of somebody and you're getting more questions there's words coming out of their mouth, but it doesn't seem to be getting you somewhere. Or there's just this unknown obstacle that you can kind of feel and you can't even put words to it. And if you say it, it almost feels like you're making too much of a fuss. But nevertheless, you still know it's there. Feels a bit like that for you. And then in the middle we have the Three of Pentacles. Three of Pentacles is often a very overlooked card, but I kind of see it, especially when it comes up with an emotional card, like it's a thread of togetherness, or are we on the same page? Do we both want the same thing? Does it mean the same thing to me as it means to you? At work, it can be, am I thinking the same as my colleagues? Am I still in ethos with this, these people? You know, or even who are these people? 
what is this team's call or whatever it is that you're doing you sort of feel a bit of a sense of alienation but do you know what has just come channeled to me is delicious alienation how weird is that gemini so there's a sense in which it's not always bad to feel on the outside of something sometimes it means you've outgrown it and sometimes it means you don't share what those values are anymore with that person or group of people but that you're ready to do it differently to either move on from this or to change it and gemini's love change you know you're equipped for change you're a mutable air sign and it's you know you rule air and air changes all the time it can't really stay stagnant otherwise it can be quite harmful when air is stagnant so then we move here and this is like the major arcana big whammy card um very gorgeous virgin version here from the lightseers tarot we've got the lovers the lovers chica chica. so the lovers of course represents gemini i know this is your card when you get your card coming up in a tarot reading it's exciting you know it's exciting times and i forgot to say as well that at the end of this reading i'm going to do a little pick a card for you so i'll do three major arcana cards and you can just ask a little question of yourself and get an answer at the end must remember that let's hope i remember to do it gemini that'd be good it'd be just like me to say it and then not do it okay so we have the lovers now the lovers apart from anything else originally used to be called the choice getting my hot water bowl used to be called the choice as a tarot card it quite often depicts somebody choosing between two lovers usually a man with two women i don't know if i've ever seen a woman with two men uh, a woman with two men or a man with two men or a woman with two women do you know what i mean it tends to be a man with two women that kind of slightly old school version of it but either way for anyone it's the choice it's and it can manifest as a literal choice like i have to make up my mind about x or y or z but it can also come up as the parting of ways as in you were doing it one way which is how you came into the month and then it almost splits off and it is like a sliding doors situation sort of where you can take one way or the other but you don't actually know that you're making a choice you're just getting a feeling that you should go in this direction later on you can look back and think to yourself i was at, i was making an active choice there that actually really affected what i did for the rest of my life for the last two years whatever it is it's a bit like being at a crossroads but it, it has only two roads what do they call it it's a junction isn't it it's a junction in the uk so you come to a road and you can go right or left you're at a junction okay love this let's dig a bit deeper for you gemini i'm going to take some more cards especially about the lovers and the love junction that sounds like a sort of 19 late 1970s early 80s prog rock band <coughs> hi there welcome to the love junction do you know what i mean anyhow maybe i've had a bit too much coffee this morning so gemini this reading if it does resonate there will be an extended reading as well i should have told you that at the beginning you see I just started rabbiting on um and if this does resonate with you the extended reading looks at this reading and we go much deeper and we clarify and we go a little nuts and we do channeled messages from your person um we ask how do they feel about you and we ask any awkward questions that we we want answered basically so if you're interested in that and it turns out to be your story that will be the first link in the description box so i've told you everything now pick a cards extended reading links we've got our three cards here from how we're entering the building of march okay so what's going on in the lovers Ooh. I'm going to take one more for that Ooh, oh, hello no i'm not because the cards have helped themselves to the floor oh i knew it would be 
I can't speak. I knew it would be Major Arcana. We'll keep these two over here. Secret squirrel cards over there. You stay there. Down, boy. Okay. How interesting. So we get, let's just focus in on these two for the lovers. We get the hanged man and justice. Now these two are fairly similar in terms of tarot cards for me often have like a yin energy or a yang energy. So I would say that the hanged man is definitely yin energy. It represents the planet Neptune, which is why it's all these kind of greeny sea colors. And Neptune rules Pisces. Some of you may have water in your chart, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. So have a, have a look, get, get a look at your chart at Cafe Astrology. You can get like a free chart in lots of different places. I feel like here, this is yin energy that's crept into this lovers, this choice. Some of you are coming into a stage in a relationship or in your love life in general, where you're suspended for a reason. It can be, sometimes the universe kind of, I wanna say holds things back for a reason. It wants you to go within. It wants you to test your own theory it wants you to awaken your third eye chakra, your crown chakra, that kind of intuitive energy about the situation and about your own situation, whether you're single or coupled, you know, it wants you. And this is something that us mutable signs find a bit tricky to do because we like to move and we like to shift. But this is asking you to stay still a little bit, just for a little while, because something's being metered out in a relationship. You've got justice with the hanged man. Now, justice, hard to say if it's yin or yang, it's both, I think, because you've got two scales, but it's also a dualistic card, like the lovers. Two people, two scales, Gemini, the twins. I feel, Gemini, that you simultaneously have almost two choices. And both of them are going to be kind of served up to you in March. So somebody might make you an offer of something. If you're single, they might just, you know, ask you out on a date. Um, and if you're coupled as well, they just might come up with something like a plan or can we do this or I want to take it in this direction. And it might just make you... It's hard to explain. How am I going to put this? I need to look at those other two cards. I'm going to look at the other two cards because honestly I feel a bit of a complicated stumbling block that I cannot put my finger on, I can't put words to it. So where, oh my God, okay, now I can. Now I can. Okay, so these two cards are the other two that fell on the floor. Let's put those just there. Right, in order to help us out, and it does. We've got the seven of wands and the eight of cups. Some of you might be dealing with a fire sign, Leo, Aries, Sagittarius, but also the Eight of Cups, mm, Saturn in Pisces. Pisces coming up again for you. The Eight of Cups is a card where you distance yourself from something or someone you love. Now, this can be known as the breakup card that you actually literally break up with somebody or you finish it or they finish it, it finishes, you know, old school breakup card. But it can also mean that you take an aspect of a relationship or someone's behaviour 
and you move to distance yourself from that aspect. Eights are a movement, so there is a momentum and a movement. So for some of you, there's an issue here around what's true, what you know, what's secret, what's hidden, and you need to spend some time. And this may be time where you don't know what quite what's happening and you don't know quite how you're making up your mind with this Seven of Cups because you, do, you know you don't quite have all the information that you would like but you're weighing it up. And what's happening behind the scenes with the universe is that karmically, the universe is weighing it up also. And that's a very interesting kind of perspective. It's not necessarily quick, and it's not necessarily that thinking is gonna particularly help you with it. It's more about the feeling and I would include in that hanged man feeling card, feelings, dreams, messages, hunches, premonitions, you know, however you want to put it, it feels like it's there. It feels like you're going to know. It's like Tyrion, I always say this, it's like Tyrion in Game of Thrones. I drink and I know things. Now you don't necessarily drink Gemini, but you know things. And maybe you drink as well, I don't know, but you know things, all right? You actually already know what you need to know. It's in there, you have the answers. So the universe is doing that job of justice. It's doing the job of presenting you with karma, with feelings, with hunches, and it's trying to get you to navigate your own way around it rather than tell you what to do. Wouldn't it be a lot easier if the universe just told you what to do? I know, but then we wouldn't have like freedom and all that stuff. I'm like, so? <laughs> anyway, we won't get philosophical about it. Eight of Cups. So let's take a card in a minute as well and we'll, we'll have a look at that Eight of Cups. Distancing yourself from something. There's definitely that in your reading this month. A need to distance yourself. Um, and some of you might even not want to distance yourself, but the universe might kind of help you out with that karmically. I know, universe is good at that. Then we have the Seven of Wands. Let's just zoom in on that one a minute. Seven of Wands, Mars in Leo. This is a card which in the Rider Waite has somebody um, like they've got like a pitchfork almost. They're defending themselves. You know, there's people going at them and they're ready to stand and fight. And Mars, of course, is the planet of war and fighting. And Leo is a fire sign that's fixed. So put those two together and you've got a need to stand up for yourself, draw a line and make a boundary with somebody. OK. And this is all tied in here with action following contemplation of the hanged man, choices that are not necessarily readily obvious, but nevertheless, by walking one way or the other, you're making a choice. And then action in terms of moving away from things that aren't good for you, don't serve you, that you don't want about a person, about a relationship, about a situation, okay? all going on. Let's have another little looky see at the Eight of Cups. Well, I'm going to say what next, actually. Oh my God, so much Major Arcanas. Oh, I like that one. Everybody's had that one. And you've got one more here. We're going to look at that in a minute. Two more little Brucey bonus and then remember we're doing our little pick a card at the end see I have remembered I have remembered okay I rather like this this is good so we get the Hierophant and the Hierophant is telling you to gather knowledge so it may be that you need to um, learn more about a particular skill like dreaming like tarot like interpretation um, manifesting something like that it feels like 
there's something you can learn that's going to help you in this situation. I'm getting lucid dreaming. That might just be literally for one of you because I've never really known what that was, but it's coming in. Okay, so I have to say it, so it's coming in. But this is like spiritual techniques for getting to the truth. You can learn some and they, they might be weird. You know, they might be weird. We don't mind weird though. Geminis don't mind weird. Then the Knight of Wands. I rather like this. So again, you could be dealing with a fire sign with the Knight of Wands, but also this brings a bit of action to the situation. There's going to be some action that prompts this questioning that you're going to find yourself in. So somebody asks you out, says something, makes an announcement, makes a statement, whatever it is, okay? And it's going to push you to this point of contemplating, asking for time to decide, and then deciding and moving in a certain direction. And then the Four of Swords, making peace with your decision. I like that. Okay. Get on. These are great. So the two cards here that we have in addition, Eight of Wands and the World. I mean, that is gorgeous. Eights again, remember with the Eight of Cups, it's a movement card. So the Eight of Wands is a communication card, fire communication. It's actually, I think it's Jupiter and Sagittarius. So it's a feeling of speaking, saying something, having a conversation, momentum, um, moving forward with something, getting a message, making something happen. Moving from this yin energy, because remember it's fa it's passive feminine yin energy, the eight of cups, to yang energy of I'm going to say this, I'm going to hear this, we're going to talk about this, we're going to communicate, this is going to happen, and it starts a whole new cycle with somebody. <sighs> Drop that mic, let's do the little pick a card. Get on. Okay, so no biggie, we're just doing three majors, one, two, and three. I'm not going to time stamp it because we don't need to. And also some of you might choose more than one. In the extended reading, which is, that will be the link under the description box, we're going to look closer at the lovers. We're going to look at what you need to be thinking about walking away from, but also is there anything subconsciously that you need to know? How do they feel about you and what's going on with your person? Okay. Now let's do that one is number three. I don't do reversals with these, by the way. That one is number two. I know what that one is. That's number one. Okay. <laughs> three, two, so don't take long about this because it's just one card and also it's it's remember we're working on hunches okay working on hunches ready i'm going to do number one do you like my paper little hearts that i made yes number one i knew what this one was it's the hermit for number one okay the hermit is the energy of being in the cave now, some of you might be dealing with somebody who has not had a lot to say. They may have been absent, they may have been separate, they may have disappeared, they may have ghosted, whatever it is. Sometimes this represents um, the masculine being in the cave. But for some of you, it represents your need to withdraw from quite a dramatic, I think there's a lot of drama around your situation. And you need to withdraw in order to get your answers, okay? Even if, and this will be the case for a lot of you, somebody's already sort of withdrawn on you, you need to withdraw too and take your time and do not be rushed. Sometimes that Knight of Wands is in a bit of a rush to push you forward so that you don't have time to make a proper decision. Don't fall for that, okay? Take your time. You, they need to come out of the cave and you need to get in it. 
okay? Number two. Ha! <laughs> I bet loads of you chose this. Look at that. Isn't that funny? We get the lovers. <laughs> and there's the man choosing between two women. Very popular. Okay. So the lovers, the lovers. You definitely have a choice to make if you've chosen number two. And that choice is pretty much going to come up in the next month or so. It's going to show you its ass. You know, it really is. It's almost easier for you if you chose number two because, and we will, by the way, look at these in the extended reading. I will look further at number one, number two and number three because they'll all have something to say. It's almost easier for you, number two, because the universe will push information in your face. It will be like, okay, here's what you need to know. This, this and this. Make your decision. Okay, I rather like that. It's not the easiest, but I still like it. Because it's more pushing you towards making a decision. And then number three, you get the magician. Beautiful card. When you get the magician, it's um, you can see it's got a sun symbol and a number one on it. Okay. This is your own confidence. It's to do with building your own confidence. So you may not have felt particularly confident about a situation. And it's very important with that Mars in Leo, seven of wands that's just here underneath here, that you find your confidence in this situation because the universe knows that you can really shine a light here and it wants you to stand up and be counted. And you may feel nervous about that, but the universe wants to push you to be number one in your own life. So for you, that eight of cups might be very powerful in that you're making a statement to somebody that you are drawing a boundary very clearly. Now, of course, some of you may have been attracted to all three cards. I am gonna look at all of them in the extended reading, but they can all count. You can look at one, two, and three. I find, especially with Geminis and Pisceans and Sagittarians, that you're often drawn to multiple things at once and you can cope with that, so that's fine. Take what you need from all of that. Wowzers. Okay, I'm going to go and do the extended. We're going to channel, we're going to dig. We're going to do all of that good stuff. Cool, I like this reading for you. Leave me a comment. Let me know, Gemini. Let me know what your situation is. Let me know what you think of the cards, how they resonated. And I'll see you on the other side. Namaste.